you may be seated. I do want to say this before I start this proclamation because um, I never come out anymore expecting church as usual. I expect uh, um, for God to meet us uh, in, our, in his own way. And as I listen to that song, it has a catchy beat and it feels good. Um, but for those of you that have sang that song, um, my word of advice to you is, I believe, Laurie said she's going to be preaching on um, thanking God through the hard things. Because when we proclaim and we ask God to lead us where our feet, spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you lead me. That's saying that you want God to take you into the deep things. You want him to take you to a place where you can't even see. That means you're walking in a faith that's unlike anything natural. So be mindful that when you ask God for something, he's true to his word. He'll give you what you ask for as long as it's in alignment with his word. Um, so just know, because um, sometimes I think we sing, we don't even know what we're asking for. That's just a, a little extra that I wanted to throw out to you. Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you once again for this opportunity to stand before your people and to be your mouthpiece. God, I ask that you would anoint my eyes, my lips, and my ears, that I would hear, see, and say, thus saith the Lord, nothing of me, God, but only of you. God, let none of us that came out today with a need from you, with a word, expecting a word from you, don't let us go out empty, God, but let, a, let your word accomplish what it was set out to do, that our lives will be changed for the better, God. We thank you, we bless you, we praise you. It's in your name, Jesus, I give you praise. Amen. Today, as we celebrate our call to wholeness, as well as Christ our King Sunday, we also turn our hearts towards a deeper commitment of stewardship to God, both as individuals as well as in our community. Though today marks the end of our series on wholeness, our call to wholeness, hashtag stewardship, wholeness in Christ is not a one-time event, but a lifelong journey that touches every aspect of our life. God's call to wholeness is a call to embrace his work of restoration in every area of our life. It's not something we receive passively. True wholeness requires a response, a response of stewardship, being faithful caretakers of all God has entrusted to us. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 20 through to 24, the Apostle Paul prays that God would sanctify us through and through, that our whole spirit, soul, and body will be kept blameless at the coming of Christ. That lets us know that wholeness is about more than spiritual renewal. It's about every part of our life being restored and made holy, meaning our allegiance is no longer to the kingdom of success nor happiness but to the progression of God's kingdom of glory and grace. As we become more whole in Christ, we're also called to steward every part of our own being with care and reverence towards the almighty God. Romans 14, eight says, if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we indeed belong to the Lord. The Apostle Paul also urges us in Romans 12, 1, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable and pleasing to God. This indeed is an act of stewardship. That means it's our duty to nurture our physical and spiritual health, practice self-control, 
deny this fleshy, messy flesh that we have and live in a manner that glorifies God and God alone as well as honor God with our minds by consciously choosing to meditate on things that are in alignment with his word. Whatsoever things are true, noble, pure, and right. That's in Philippians chapter 4. And allowing God to heal us from past hurts and rejection and actively cultivate God's love, his joy, his gentleness, and once again, his self-control. Wholeness is not just about personal well-being. It's not about the what about me syndrome, but it's about how we live as stewards of the life God has given us. According to the word of God, where a man's treasure is, there his heart will be also. Meaning, wherever someone places their greatest value or focus, that's where their heart will naturally be drawn towards. Does your life prioritize material and earthly possessions over spiritual values? Are you kingdom-minded, or do you live a life as if this world is all there is, and everything stops with what you can see in the natural? Stewardship is a response to God's faithfulness. And just as God is faithful to restore us, we are called to faithfully steward the gifts and resources he's given unto us. Or that he's trusted us with because it all belongs to him. And not only on the days where we feel like being faithful. Not on the days when it feels good to be obedient to the word of God. But in every season of our life. 1 Peter 4.10 proclaims, Each of us should use whatever gift we have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. In its various forms. When's the last time you did something to please someone else by showing the love of God? Our gifts, whether they are financial resources, abilities, or time, all gifts are meant to be used in service to God and for others. When we celebrate our call to wholeness, we must also ask, how are we stewarding the resources God has entrusted to us, both individually, but I've come out to tell you this morning, Trinity Lutheran Church, we have to also look at how are we stewarding, it, stewarding God's increase corporately as a church. And this is not just about what you think is your money, because it's not yours. Though financial stewardship is an important part of our faith, we couldn't have service today in this building if we didn't have some way to pay the mortgage, if we didn't have some way to pay for the light, if we didn't have some way to pay for the water, if we didn't have some way to pay for a pastor. We wouldn't be able to do that. It's about all of our resources our time, our talents, our gifts, and financial resources. Wholeness is a lifelong process. Every day that God lets you wake up, every day that he shakes you, not your alarm clock, and he breathes life into your nostrils, and you stand up and you come out to do whatever you're called to do for the next day, that's a part of the process. It's not an annual event when I get to stand before you in November for two or three or four weeks and basically talk to you about stewardship and how to give. Stewardship is a part of an ongoing journey. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are not to conform to the pattern of this world. Yes, we live in it. Yes, we see what's going on. But that's not our call. 
but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Transformation or wholeness requires daily choices to renew our mind, to be faithful stewards of what God has entrusted us, and to align the whole of who we are with God's will for our life. It's a daily act of surrender to the will and the ways of the Almighty God. As individuals, we're not alone in this journey. The body of Christ, the church, it exists to support and encourage us to a call to wholeness. But we must be certain that every single decision in our life is filtered through the lens of a kingdom mindset. For a kingdom mindset involves seeing the world through God's eyes and living in accordance with his will. It's based on the idea that Jesus' kingdom is present right now, not just something we're longing to see when he calls us home to eternity. Individuals with a kingdom mindset understand that we have a unique purpose to help further the kingdom of God. We each have a unique role in the body of Christ, and we are called to work together in unity and love for the common good. As a church, we're called to steward our resources, not just individually. As a church, financial, human, and spiritual toward the work of the kingdom. Together, we are called to serve those in need, bring healing to the broken, and share the gospel with the world. Some, for some people, the only church that they will ever see is your lifestyle when you leave these four walls. They'll never come in this building, but they're watching you as you leave your house on Sundays. But they're also watching you when you come home Monday through Friday to see how you're living. Can they see anything different in your lifestyle and their lifestyle? Can they see the blood of Jesus covering you? Do they see the love of Christ flowing out from you? Or do they see you living the same lifestyle as those that are in the world? In our scripture reading today, we are invited to reflect on our commitment to wholeness. Wholeness in our relationship with God, our community, our personal lives, and our giving. Malachi, a prophet who spoke to the people of Israel at a time of spiritual decline. He calls us to a life of integrity. That means when nobody's looking at you, are you still walking in a way that pleases God? Commitment and covenant faithfulness, which is an agreement between God and his people, that's us, in which God makes a promise to his people and usually requires something, um, some kind of conduct and obedience and return. I'll give you this example. God preserved the world through Noah. He initiated redemption through Abraham. He established the nation of Israel through Moses. He promised an eternal shepherd king through David and then fulfilled all these covenants through the shed blood of Jesus the Christ. In return, we are privileged to celebrate Christ our King on this holy day. It's a personalized thing. It means I take ownership of him and I acknowledge him as my King of Kings and he takes ownership of me. But if you've had time to study our scripture reading, and I asked you four weeks ago to read through Malachi throughout these last four weeks, you'll discover that the Israelites had turned away from God. They not only turned away from them in their lifestyle, but even in their offering, failing to honor their commitment to give back to him and the tithe and the offering. That were due not to the church, but to God. Instead, they were withholding from God. And as a result, they were experiencing a lack of blessings in their lives. When's the last time you've given your own self a checkup from the neck up? Not your neighbor, not your preacher, 
not your friend, but you. Proverbs 10.9 proclaims that whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Numbers 32.33 proclaims, but if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. You see, the nature of sin is such that whether others discover our sin or not, our sin will, will be discovered, will discover us. For none of us, I don't care who you are, the preacher, the teacher, the backslider, it does not matter. None of us can outrun the consequences of sin. But on the other side of the coin, none of us can ever outrun the blessings of the Lord when our lives are in alignment with the will and the word of the Almighty God. In verses 10 through 12, God invites his people to bring the full tithe into the storehouse, promising that he will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that we cannot even contain. That invitation is not just about your money. The invitation presented by Malachi is about returning to God in every area of our lives. When we commit to returning to God, whether in our worship, our relationships, our service, whatever it may be, God promises to pour out his blessings. God desires to bless us in every area of our life. But wholeness requires that we return to him fully, nothing held back. Remember I said some weeks ago that half obedience is disobedience? God said, will a man rob me? You've robbed him in his tithes and often. When we make a commitment to wholeness, we become part of God's treasured possession. We are as witnesses in the world showing that true wholeness come from what we can accumulate, not from what we can accumulate, but from who Jesus is and who we are in Christ Jesus. In Malachi 3, 13 through 15, Laurie, can you bring me that paper, please? God addresses the cynicism of some of the people who questioned whether following God was truly worth it. They saw the wicked prospering and wondered if their commitment to God was in vain. Malachi reminds us that faithfulness to God is not always easy. I got news for you. This life is not easy. It's just not easy. And at times, the world may seem to offer a more immediate path to success. But the commitment to wholeness in our relationship with God, it requires perseverance and trust in a God that we've never seen. To be whole means not only living according to God's will when things are going well in our lives, when we're on the mountaintop. The true test is when you're in the valley low, when you still trust that God is everything that he says he is. We also remain steadfast when everything in our life seems to be challenging us at the very core of who we are. True commitment involves trusting that God is faithful and he's true to his word. It comes from an inward peace an assurance that God is with us and we are his. For he is the one who was, the one who is right now, and the one who is to come. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. So as we celebrate our call to wholeness, we are invited to make a commitment a commitment to personal growth, a commitment to healing, 
but we're making a commitment to God's call to wholeness, hashtag stewardship. Wholeness is our personalized gift from God, but it's also responsibility. God has entrusted us with his grace, his resources, and his mission. You don't own anything, nor do I. We're just called to steward the gifts in ways that honor the most high God. Does your lifestyle honor the most high God? Would he be pleased with our choices? Now, just like you, I received in the mail, as did my family, the wholeness letter. And yes, I'm aware that this letter has stirred up so many emotions. I understand that the stewardship team highlighted three priorities regarding finances. And with God being my helper, I stand before you to tell you I'm going to do my part. Because what I've discovered is that none of us are exempt from following the laws of God. The Bible declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I don't care what your position is in the ministry or outside of the ministry. We are all called to obedience to Christ and to please him. This is not about this church or me. It's about ultimately pleasing Christ. And I understand the highlighted three priorities regarding finances. And like I said, I'm going to do my part. But my goal today is not to sway you one way or the other, whether you take part in this or not. That's not my concern. It's between you and God. My call is to preach the good news of Jesus and the whole, hear his voice and be his mouthpiece. And I believe that God is calling us to a higher place in every area of our lives, not just your money. So for those of you who say that tithing is not for today, I stand before you to tell you I have no argument for you, none. Because I believe that Jesus didn't come to do away with the law, but he instead came to fulfill the law. And in his fulfillment... He gave me so much more than the law could ever on its best day give me. But what Jesus did for me on the cross is priceless. And though I agree that giving is indeed a matter of the heart, I've even preached it. Chris preached it on last week. There's only one problem with that. The heart is a double-edged sword. Because Jeremiah 17, 9 declares, the heart is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? But I equally believe that tithing without love or obedience to God's amounts to nothing more than a meaningless ritual. So in all fairness, when you consider what Christ Jesus did for us, I would dare to say that the tithe, which is 10%, not 9.5%, and then we have offerings on top of that, it should be just a starting point. Let us commit ourselves today to steward in our time, our talents, and our treasures with faithfulness, with a heart of gratitude, and with a deep desire to bring glory to God. If I said to you, test me, prove me, and you gave me an opportunity because I'm human, not intentionally, but I probably would sometimes fail you. But 100% of the time, 
God will always stand true and firm on his word. So as we embrace the call to wholeness, may we also embrace the call to stewardship, caring for all that God has given us and using it not to build our kingdom, not to build our church, not to build our pockets. It's like, well, you know, Pastor Risi, I gave last week and nothing happened. The truth is, we don't know how God is going to bless us. We just have to do it out of obedience to him. Though I stand here and I make this plea, because ultimately, I said earlier, I don't want to give up everything we have and have nothing to show for it. I want the deficit met, but I want us to have, be a church of overflow, and not just so that we can get fat and unhealthy, but that we can reach out to others and that we can compel those to come, that we can have a place for the homeless, that we can do things that we in our finite minds right now in the state we're in couldn't even imagine. But God has the blueprint. And whether you want to acknowledge it or not, no one can run a ministry without finances. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your calling. Thank you for calling us to wholeness. We thank you for the grace you have shown us and for the gifts you've entrusted to us. Today, God, we commit our lives to being faithful stewards of all that you have given us, not towards man, but as unto you, Jesus. We do everything as unto you. Let this flesh die that you can be glorified and the enemy horrified for what takes place in your kingdom. Help us to honor you with our bodies, our time, and our talents and resources. God, guide us in using all that we have for your glory and the good of others. We trust you with, that you will continue your work of restoration in our lives. And we offer ourselves to you as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to you. It's in your name, Jesus, we give you glory and we pray. Amen.